How do you measure the success of a new video game? Is it the total amount of people who bought the game? Well, a lot of people bought No Man's Sky and hated the game. Most of us probably scarred for life with Hello Games, so that can't be it. How about using the average Steam rating of a game to measure success? Well, there are many highly rated games that don't sell well and technically aren't successful games. One can look at something like Invisigun Heroes. It's a new, fantastically rated game and a perfect example of this. People love it, but it's not selling well. So we can't just look at user ratings either. But maybe it's how many players are on the game, or how the stock price of the company fluctuates during its initial release. Today, I'm going to look at all of those things to determine if For Honor failed or succeeded. For Honor's open and closed betas across all platforms scored somewhere between 3 and 6 million players, with the PC beta populations accounting for about 1.8 million players at a peak. Now obviously, nowhere near that many people picked up For Honor, so let's take a look at the actual player count trends in For Honor from the release until this weekend of the 24th. The Steam version of the game accounts for over 50% of all total purchased For Honor games, so we will look at that first as a benchmark. So almost 350,000 people own For Honor on Steam, a number that always trends upward from release, plus or minus a small percentage of returns. So it's a successful launch, right? Well, if we swap over to the peak player counts, we can see a negative trend from over 45,000 concurrent players to less than 26,000, a 47% drop. You can see the trend more clearly here in the hourly count, but overall, still a very significant drop. But why are we seeing this drop? I think this is most certainly due to For Honor choosing to rely on that exclusive peer-to-peer -peer network code. In a game where fractions of a second can represent the difference between life and death, where every single frame counts at the highest level, Ubisoft resorted to saving money on bargain bin online connectivity and screwed us, they screwed us all. To this very second, nothing has been fixed, and players online have taken to the Steam review section to lament, cry out, and scorn For Honor's P2P setup. But the peer-to-peer -peer connectivity it's not really the issue here, it's the fact that it's coupled with a game that is designed to work against it. Card games and other turn-based strategy tactical games use P2P just fine because latency doesn't really affect the moment-to-moment -moment gaming, but it sure as hell does in For Honor. Historically, we typically see introductions of successful AAA games in tandem with increased interest in investing with that company. Researching many famous AAA games from the past will show you that this is commonplace. The stock price of Ubisoft up until release shows what we would consider normal activity for a company about to release a new game. The bid price is rising and positively linear. However, we do see something very different. At the launch date of February 14th, an actual decrease in public interest for the company. This is rare. For seven days after releasing For Honor, Ubisoft's stock price continued to decrease until stabilizing after. Now what this means, on a very base level, is that more people sold their stock than bought stock in Ubisoft during this time. Now if you have more people wanting to sell their stock than buy it, the supply is going to go up and the price is going to go down. That simply means that stockholders were not confident after the release of For Honor due to the negative reception of the performance and the Uplay connectivity, which drove them to sell their interest in the company. I myself really enjoy For Honor's combat system. I just think that the peer-to-peer -peer connectivity in the Uplay, forced Uplay bullshit is just killing it. The gameplay is amazing, but the modes can often compete with the main gameplay design. I did a video talking about this, just click on the tag at the top of your screen if you want to check it out. I'm not so sure Ubisoft is in hot water, but I think they aren't a company that people are crying out for. This last six months has seen an overall failure by Ubisoft, and you can see the value of the company trending downward here. Keep in mind that this is a six month window that Ubisoft also released the highly anticipated Steep and Watch Dogs 2. And while seeing some slight successes with them, the overall trend for the calendar year so far is negative. 
I believe Ubisoft should really be thinking about how they can provide more consistent quality games and improve that broken Uplay system that shackles them to our PC. But what about you? Are you one of those Uplay haters or feel like Ubisoft needs to step up their game? Let me know in the comments section, I'll be happy to chat with you. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, by all means hit the thumbs up button and subscribe here for more future content. And have yourself a kick-ass day guys.